I am Brad Yoder, a professor and interim chair, Department of Cell Developmental and Integrative Biology at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. I'm here to talk a little bit about the, uh, the initiative coming out of NIH uh, to address issues of reproducibility, rigor, transparency in our scientific research. Um, as a scientist, you know, we usually consider uh, our science to be self-correcting over the long term, and that is, has been the case. Uh, but more, more acutely, uh, in the short term, there are some issues where we can really improve the reproducibility of our, our research. And to ensure that, NIH has put forth a series of initiatives to try to uh, bring in accountability, transparency, uh, and rigor into our scientific uh, exercises. Um, and with this, we are hoping to, the NIH is hoping to really support the most rigorous um, uh, science that can come out of our programs. And, and the long-term goal would be that this would improve the success rate of our um, uh, clinical trials, uh, our ability to reproduce the findings that we find across multiple different laboratories. Uh, and this is really important, as, as you can imagine, if, the, if our science is not reproducible, then um, the support that we get from the public begins to erode, uh, and that will have a major impact on our ability to fund and conduct the research that needs to be done. So NIH is focusing on four uh, areas. The first major area is, is premise. The second is uh, rigor. Uh, the third is biological variables. And then the final area is authentication. Um, and this is to make sure that all the resources uh, and reagents that you're using in your proposed study uh, are accurate and are what we believe they are. Uh, a common example of this is the antibodies. Um, you know, what was the approach that you used or what justification do you have that says that this antibody really recognizes what you think it does? Um, and in most cases, you know, commercial institutes, in, in commercial companies will provide that type of verification. However, that is really not sufficient um, because of lot and batch to batch variabilities that are not really covered by the commercial ones. You need to be able to come up with ways that says I've tested this antibody, how often I've tested it. Other areas would include such as cell lines. Um, you know, are you working with the right cell line that you propose that you're working with? Um, have you considered things like off-targets when you're doing siRNA or knockdown type studies? And things like that. Um, have you done authentication to make sure that the, the reagents and the resources that you are proposing to use are accurate uh, and robust? Um, and with regards to where these sections would be in your proposal, um, the issues of, of, of rigor and uh, biological variables should be included in your approach and research design type of sections. Um, the authentication is a special situation. That is a one-page uh, attachment that goes into your uh, applications. The way that you approach authentication will be very dependent upon the field that you're in. Uh, so some examples of this would be for antibodies. Uh, a common approach is to use uh, Western blot to look for the right size of the protein that your antibodies and is it a single band or multiple bands. Uh, another approach is to knock down the protein through either siRNA or shRNA approaches to show that that band disappears. Uh, immunofluorescence analysis to show that the protein you're detecting goes to the right spot or is located in the right spot. Uh, but the gold standard, I think, for authentication of such things as antibodies would be to uh, use a source where that protein is either completely deleted uh, or is not expressed in those cells or tissues that you're looking at. That way a negative uh, result would be very, very important to show that this is recognizing specifically the protein that you think that it is <clears throat> under the different conditions that, that you're analyzing. Other areas, for example, in siRNA knockdown studies, common approaches would be to use uh, scrambled oligos uh, or scrambled sequence. Uh, this really controls for things such as an interferon response, not necessarily for the sequence. So older, uh, additional uh, approaches and controls uh, would be to use multiple siRNAs to the same uh, gene to ensure that you get the same outcome. Uh, and better approaches, if resources are not a major limitation here, would be to um, sequence uh, the, the RNA to see what changes are happening and from multiple different siRNA knockdown targets or from the same target with different uh, siRNAs to the same gene and showing that you get the same response um, across each one of those uh, siRNAs. 
Uh, so those are some of the common approaches to, uh, to look at those type of resources. Uh, for cell lines, uh, uh, there are sequencing strategies that you can use to identify what species they're from as well as um, whether they match up with previously known sequence from that particular cell. Uh, so this, how you authenticate your resources is going to be very dependent upon what your proposed studies are and what field you are in uh, and how you can approach that. The first three, uh, which is premise, uh, rigor, and biological variables are all scorable events. Um, scientific premise should be included in your significance portion of your grants uh, and reviewers are instructed to look at that and how you evaluated the rigor of the previous uh, studies that support your hypothesis. Uh, scientific rigor and uh, biological variables uh, should all be included in your research design and approach section. They are also a scorable uh, section. Um, they will evaluate how well you set up your experimental design to ensure that you have rigor and transparency in, in your proposals. The final one, which is authentication, is much like the vertebrate animal section. Uh, that will be um, not scored, but if you fail to include a adequate, if it's deemed non-acceptable by the reviewers, that will have an impact on your funding and it will delay uh, the ability of, of NIH or will delay the funding source from NIH. If you do not include the right information about authentication, um, this will most definitely cause a delay. Um, without that, the program officers and grants management specialists will have to come back to you and say, we need additional information about how you're going to uh, authenticate uh, the resources and, and reagents that you are proposing to use.